Uh, today we have Steve Rapp with us today. Uh, coach Rapp is the offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, and assistant head coach at Dr. Wise, Dr. Henry Wise High School in Maryland. They are a five-time state championship in the 4A class. Coach, how you doing? Fine. How you doing, Coach? Thanks I, for having me. No problem, Coach, and uh, thanks for coming on, and um, I'm, I'm doing good as well. Um, so, I mean, we, we chit-chatted. I'm, I'm just going to go straight into it because we were chit-chatting before we came on about self-scouting. Do you want to kind of just start, I mean, going in there, we can just kind of evolve from there? On, okay. Cause um, that works. I think um, as an OC, self-scouting is the most important thing that uh, that, that, that you kind of do in your personal time, if that makes sense. I think that um, the more and more the game moves to analytics, the more and more it, uh, it becomes important, right? Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of the times that uh, – some of the, I mean, just some of the basic self scouts are uh, formations. If you're a personnel team, um, when you're changing different personnel and moving different personnel, are you only in a set of formations or are you doing multiple things out of those things? Um, the biggest thing is <clears throat> that I think that, you know, people get into is defenses. They scout formations and then plays that come out of formations. So are you only running certain plays out of certain formations or – does it become more of a, a a a situation where you're in a heavy personnel, so it's all run all the time, or do you throw it out of that personnel, or you know, is do you become a uh, a field slash boundary team? Are, are you always running strong versus weak? Um, you know, what is the 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 run to pass ratio in? different formations of personnel. These are all the things that the defensive coordinators that are preparing for you are tracking. So if you're not tracking it yourself as an old coordinator, you're shorting yourself. Okay. I mean, and then what, how, when do you try to get that done by each week? Each week. Uh, so my, my normal, my normal process is um, the way, the way we do it at wise is when we play Friday night, Saturday is uh, the time that um, essentially the coordinators, so the D coordinator is responsible for all of the all, uh, defensive stats, whether that, you know, that be tackles, TFL, I mean, you know, TFL, sacks, whatever. The O coordinator is responsible for the um, all the offensive stats. So as I do the offensive stats and put the information in the huddle, which will be Saturday, usually, usually either late Friday night, or early Saturday morning, I guess, is, would probably be better. Um, at that point, I'm in putting all the information in the huddle, and then when I input it all in the huddle, I essentially have it all done by, uh, I would tell you, by Saturday afternoon. Okay. Do you have somebody, who, or somebody, or who does it, uh, the end game, write down your calls each play? So, we don't do that. Um, we probably should. Like, I've discussed it over and over and you know, kind of what we have a stat man that kind of keeps like um, one of the JV coaches keeps the the stats, you know, the carries, the yards, the completion, pers- you know, passes, the, that type, that type deal. Um, we really don't have somebody that writes the play calls down. What I do myself is I input once it's time to do the stats, I input the plays into huddle myself. Um, I think it's twofold. The reason why I like doing it, I like doing it for, it keeps me consistent as to what I'm calling and it helps once again with the self scout because now I can start to develop a, uh, a pattern. Like I can see the formation and say, Oh, we probably ran this play. And if I'm right, then that means somebody else scouting us is probably right. Right. So it's a, uh, it kind of, you know, and I, then I would put a check next to that play and say, all right, we need that. We need that deal with something different next week. So it kind of keeps me in tuned and I don't, I don't really have a problem with that. I think, the more and more time I spend with our own film, the better I get as a coach. Okay. Now, when, when you're self scouting, do you, is there a point where there's too many games as the season goes on, and do you narrow it down? Do you just do the previous game? Do you do, how, what is your how many do you do to kind of keep track of what you're doing? So it takes 14 games to win the state championship in Maryland. Okay. So what I what I've done is. I have I have what I call an individual self scout, which is for me and my purposes only. And then I have like the offensive meeting self scout. So the way I do now, I basically broke it down into three quadrants. So we basically do now. I obviously you know fourteen. There's no perfect number for three. So we do it in games of five. So every fifth game. I'll meet, that'll be part of our offensive game plan and meeting. Hey, look, gentlemen, this is something. We've been in this formation and we've only ran this play 
or we've only thrown, we only ran out of this formation, right, for the last five games. I think five games gives you a real thought process of who you are, if that kind of makes sense, and what you're doing. Um, so, you know, you kind of break it in that way because five and five is basically half your season. Yeah. So you get a half a season deal, then a half a season deal, and then, you know, when you're ready to start the playoffs, that's when that second five would come. So you kind of get your get your uh, your groundwork of, okay, this is who we've been so far, this is where we're going to, or this is what we got to change, this is what we got to fix. Okay. Uh, and then on, on top of that, like, how in-depth do you get with it? Like, in terms of, do you break it down by path, by concept, by – how how in depth does that get each each time? Um, well, my individual one is way more in depth than my general one. So my individual one is uh, you know, once again, that's from my own knowledge, right? Just kind of as I'm going through the plays and setting up the game plans and talking about things and how we're gonna do it. That's that's kind of personal knowledge. I keep a notebook. So when I print the uh the tendency thing out, I keep a notebook every week for myself. Now when we do the five game, um, the five game deal. It's pretty simple. It's it's a uh, field versus boundary. It's formation. It's personnel. I mean, personnel to formation, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, I would put personnel as a box and then formation as a box to say, like, because we're a personnel team. So we jump in and out from 21 to 11 to 10 to 22 to 12. So because we're personnel driven, I just want to make sure that we're always, um, you know, we're doing different things from different personnels. Then obviously run pass, and then in the run game is strong weak, yeah. and in the pass game it's field zone. So you know basically field zone. I'm saying outside the numbers, middle of the field, vertical shot, mid and short. Now, when also while you're self scouting, how much do you look at what teams have been doing to you at, at the same time? You, so and then also on top I, uh, the follow up on that too is do you do you typically notice any like trends on how people are trying to stop you? Yes, I do, and I think that comes back to if it makes sense. That comes back to why I input the information in our own stuff because you have it's interesting, right? So we use Sky Coach. Um, I guess I could plug Sky Coach right there. Look, I think Sky Coach is the best sideline tool. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Um, you know, if it's a, a situation you want to hit me up and talk to me about it, I can give you some kind of ins and outs of things we, we, we've done over the years or whatever. But I'm telling you, Sky Coach is the way to go. So we use Sky Coach during the game. Um, and then, you know, you get back to, then you get back to, you know, after it's over, you sit down with the coaches and you're like, hey, man, this kind of gave us some problems. We saw this, we adjusted it, this was new, whatever. And then you dig into the film, you know, that night or the early the next morning and you see some things that one either you didn't see during the game right or two you're like mm, that really wasn't what was happening like you know so yeah. i think that kind of goes into that um like i told you about that notebook that i have for self-scout i also have a note section in that notebook for each team where i basically kind of make notes of what they did that was different so you know like if you're playing a four two five team that was base cover three rip Liz, and then all of a sudden you get there, and now there's a four. It's just a four two box with two high, and they're playing quarters, right? That's an adjustment for you. So that would go into the notebook. So now I can see like if we got to play them again in the playoffs or whatever the case may be. All right, this is what they did different, and this was our answer to it. Just kind of jotting down notes, right? So it's essentially saving yourself work moving forward. Um, I would say that the biggest thing that we see right now is uh, we get when we get into open sets, teams like to try to play games with us, like meaning uh, full slants on the D line. Um, when we get, you know, kind of more open, then we'll get um, a lot of twisting, some zone fires where they're dropping D line out, bringing extra men. You know, we kind of did this past year. One of the new things was the uh, the even front teams. They would play versus five man lines. They would play two threes, two fives, and put both the backers in the A gaps. Bring one, drop one. You know, bring them both. You know, kind of basically what you're seeing on TV. Right? Well, Mike, um, Mike Zimmer defense. This is not there you go. Play. Like, yeah. Yeah, like I said, what, what you're seeing on TV. So those were new adjustments for things. Um, you know, I think that a lot of times for us, we use a tight end. 
Um, or we try to use the tight end most of the time. And I've noticed that D coordinators don't like to get so cute against six man lines as they do with five man <laughs> lines. So, you know, it's kind of, uh, that kind of helps with that situation there. Um, so I think that's, that is, that's, that's more or less some of the biggest things I want to know. What are you doing with the tight end, right? Are you playing them in a nine, a mug six, a seven, you know, is it somebody inside of him? Is there an overhang outside of him? I kind of want to know what you're doing with him. Um, for us, most of the time, because we're running first, um, you know, a lot of they try to play more games in the back end than they do in the front end, which, you know, is, is sometimes, you know, where you're getting a bunch of combo coverages and things of that nature. So it's more about, to me, the chess game, right? Just kind of making adjustments and seeing what it is that you prepare for and um, moving forward from there. I get that, and then my another question is: I mean, I don't, I don't know what your schedule looks like compared to like our states. I don't know how often you play the same teams every year, but do, do you year from year look at like maybe the past two or three self scouts of the game you had against that team? When, yes. When you play, no them? doubt, no doubt. So the way it works for us here is. We have four playoff regions in the 4A, right? Our county itself is its own region because we have – there's only two counties in the state of Maryland that have over three 4A schools in the county. Our county has um, – we have 11 3A schools – I mean, 11, 11 4A schools cool. and one 3A school. Then Montgomery County, which is the county next to us, they have 13 4A schools. <laughs> and then the other 4A schools are just kind of littered all over the state, right? Like Baltimore and Baltimore County, I think they have one. And Baltimore City, they have one. And then they're kind of just, you know, throughout each one, boom, boom, boom. So no other county has more than three. So because of that, our head, we play back through our region. So the, the way it works is – just start before it was just the first four teams made it in and then they did a tournament that way so one would play four then you know obviously the winner of those two games you end up playing one and two and then you come out and then from there it's a final four and then you know boom 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 whatever so now they made it so eight teams get in so now we play one place eight two then two would play four i mean one would play four and then they reseed the tournament and then go back out into the state so yes we are always playing back through the good teams, if that makes sense, which yeah. makes it super tough because now from a um from a from a, a coaching standpoint, when you play that team in a regular season, you don't want to kind of go expose everything, right? Like yeah. you, you might know, hey, the right corner is terrible, right? And the left one's good. So we just gonna throw vertical shots at him all day, right? And then you get into the playoffs and all of a sudden that dude ain't out there anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so it's kinda you got a you got a hat trick here where it's like, all right, look, man, he sucks, but look, we don't really want to expose that until the second round of the playoffs. But you might you might play them week four in the regular season. Yeah. Like so it's you see what I'm saying? Like You're it's a different it. It's a whole different strategy. Or this has happened to us before too, where we'll play a team week nine and then turn around and play them in the first round of the playoffs, which is uh, that that is utterly ridiculous. That, oh, that happens all the time here. Like, I mean, I think there's, I think it's like two or three, two out of like the past three years. Uh, Shamna Julian has played Jonathan Alder the last week of the season, and then they end up playing each other in the playoffs. See, see, it happens I'm telling you, man. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, uh, I misspoke when we went to, we went to a nine week season last year was the first year. So now it takes five games to win the playoff yeah. to win the playoff thing. But I mean, essentially it's still four games because yeah. what happens is, is that because they put eight teams in that fifth, that fifth game basically becomes your week 10, if that makes sense. I'm not getting, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Continue with this because I, I think I think we're heading in a great direction with this okay. scouting stuff, and I, and I kind of want to stay on that. Is um, how much? I mean, obviously, you're now once the season's over, you're going to take that a full self scout, look at how your season went. How much from year to year does, does that typically affect what your your change and what you're looking to install and take out from year to year? Obviously, personnel drives that to a point. Your staff drives that to a point. But like, how much is a self scout, and then what? And then is there any extra self scouting you do once that's done, once the season's done? Oh boy, that. <laughs> and oh, I know it probably just went down a, down hey, a rabbit look, hole. That's going to, going to take us a whole nerd direction. Hey, look, that's fine. That, that question right there, I think is, um, oh boy, I think if we could get the right answer to this question right here, coach, we might get retired and be paid <laughs> forever, right? Because 
it feels like that is that right there is the biggest puzzle piece that every coach slash staff is trying to figure out, right? Like, um, um, as you know, like, well, in Maryland, we haven't played high school football yet, right? We're yeah. supposed to play in the spring. And I think from a scouting slash install slash offensive box, this has been the worst thing as a coach, right? Because I have rethought and <laughs> redone and talked about and added and took away and said, oh, no. And, you know, like this has been terrible because there is no – usually we're dealing with a timeline, and a timeline is, all right, you got a month. You got – three weeks to say, all right, this is what I'm going to do. This is how we did it. But now I had a year, right? Yeah. So the year is, oh, I didn't seen a hundred things I want to put in. Right. And then I take it to the head coach and I'm like, Hey, look, man, these are the directions I'm thinking. Boom, boom, boom. And he's like, okay, you want to add a hundred things? Then we need to take out a hundred things then. Well, why ain't trying to do that though? So now it's, you know what I'm saying? You're back, you're yeah. back to square one kind of, well, I really don't want to add a hundred of these. Cause I don't want to take a hundred away. So the way, once again, him being a um, him being a, a defensive, a, 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 just a great defensive mind. He's like, hey, look, man, the kids can't play fast if we got them thinking a thousand ways, right? So now, what I would, I guess, back to answer your question is, I believe in casting a wide net, if that makes sense, because that we're personnel driven. We have different different bodies that can do different things. So we still have a base of who we are. Like when I was six years old, the first play they ever taught me was ISO. Back then, they used to call it Blast, 23 and 24 Blast, right? So yes. today, we're still installing ISO the first play. Like, that's – we're going to make our our identity on ISO power counter, ISO power counter, really. And then we'll sprinkle in outside zone, pin and pull, right? And that's kind of who we are. So we're never going to get away from that, ever. Because um, I feel like when you lose your identity, then you just become a jack-of-all-trades and master of none, right? And – uh, Maryland, a lot like Ohio, hey, the state championship is played the first week of December, and it's cold here. So, <laughs> no, if you're really? Li- <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, so if you're living on throwing that ball, uh, you could be down playing at the Naval Academy, and which is right on the water, and it be, you know, 32 degrees or 27 degrees. Hey, it's a little tough to throw it when that happens. So um, that's kind of who we are, right? So now uh, – the age old thing of, all right, what I guess, I guess I said all of this to get back to answer your question. This is, this is what I've done. I found out what we were best at over the last three years. Okay. And I've kind of put that over here in this box. I found out what we were worse at the last three years and more or less, instead of trying to change it, fix it to make it so we're better. Is it a scheme issue? Is it a personnel issue? Is it a, I'm just calling it against the wrong defenses and not giving it a chance issue? Um, or does this just not fit who we are, what our our identity is? So I would say that we streamlined the playbook this off season, but we've also added some things. <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, no, no. Um, you know, where it's just, but the things, they, they got to fit though. So, Meaning, for example, if you're running, uh, if you're running split zone, just per se, and now you want to add the the bubble to make it a triple, uh, to make it a triple type, um, to make it a triple type deal. So now you know if you're pulling on split zone, you got two running a bubble, and if the alley defender plays, now you can throw it out there. If you're already running split zone, you adding triple to it doesn't cost you anything, if that makes sense. Yeah. You're, if your base is split zone and now all of a sudden you want to add counter GT, that's a totally different blocking scheme, totally different play. So it's, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, Whereas no. kind of like, those are the things that I think you got to evaluate more than anything else. If you're going to wholesale change, your wholesale change has got to fit who you are and what you're trying to do. You just can't say, well, I watched Bama play 37 times this off season and they ran counter GH all day, every day. So now we're going to run that. Well, you better figure out where the problems are with that. Like, and what you're going to do with the backside tackle and are you going to lock them. Are you going to read it with bubble? Are you going to throw off the alley? Are you going, you know, double RPO it and stick it? I, there's a lot of things that go with that. And that's what I think you got to find out is how much it costs you to install that one play. Okay. Now, now you mentioned, right, we've talked a lot about self-scouting 
How much do you go back through and re-scout how everybody played you? I mean, obviously you looked at yourself, but how much yeah. did you look at the opposing defenses, especially the schools you know you're going to see again in the playoffs the next year, again, and help you find those answers in the off season? All right, you want the brutally honest uh, answer or yes. you want the politically correct answer? I want, I want the honest answer. I don't care about the political I correct. only go back and watch the teams that gave us problems, okay. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying that's it. I don't like so. For example, like um, this year in the playoff in the playoff game, we got to let's see the 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 round of which would have been eight teams. The round of eight, um, we scored 30, 36 points against an opponent that was in, that's in our region. Okay, so I would go back and watch what they did defensively. Okay, to say, all right, well, what have we had? I think last year we averaged 48 points a game or 49 points a game. So that's under our average. So that because that's under our average, I'm going to go watch. Okay. Um, and kind of just, once again, what did they do? What, what Was it us? Was it them? Was it, you know, was it, was, was it bad play calls? Did they do something we didn't expect? You know, that type of deal. Okay. Then we get to the round of four and we scored 67 points or something. Right. But that was against the out of county team that we hadn't we hadn't played in the playoffs in eight years. So because of that, right, it was like a fresh start. Obviously, our game plan was good. I don't have to rewatch that, right? Yeah. We get into the state championship. That's a team that we scrimmage every year, but haven't played them in an actual game in six years. So at halftime, the score was 14-14 or 14-13. We finished the game 35-14. Right. So I would go back and kind of watch what their adjustments were just to say, "Eh, if we ever had to play them again, here's some answers against this. Um, Some of that three high Big 12 stuff has made it into our league. So two teams that we we scored 50 plus points on played it against us. Right. But we scored those points running and didn't hit any big shots against them. So I would go back and watch. All right. This three high deal. How is it affecting us? What's our answer for that? You know, kind of what's yeah. what do we do different? What's you know what's the deal? Um, I'll kind of throw a plug to any coaches listening. If you see any of that three high, treat it as field open, not field closed, because they're only playing open coverages out of it, whether it be cover two or cover four. It's a great opportunity to get your empty stuff and get five people out in the route, right? Because once again. That's one less rusher, and the middle of the field is kind of open in between, you know, that low hole type of deal. So I would say just treat it like open coverage. Um, that's the way we do, um, about the way we kind of coast it. And also in the run game, because I know you would think, well, just run the ball. Hey, just remember, there's nobody to account for that middle safety in the run game, in the block, blocking wise, right? Yeah. So because that's why they put them back there. So essentially, you would think of it as Tampa two or quarters with just the mic starting back there instead of starting in the box. Okay. That makes 100% sense, Coach. Yeah, I mean, I, shame, shame, shameless plug, I do have two, three high videos on my channel. Um, yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, I, 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 <laughs> so that's it. There you go. I, I haven't personally seen it too much either. There might be somebody in our state that runs it, but, I mean, our trend more in our state is probably the four-eye stuff. Um, hey, Coach, we're getting that from every odd front team, yeah. right? Every odd front team we play now is playing four eyes, and especially, and now here's the only thing that I'll say about that. If you put the tight end in, no four eye to the tight end side, right? They yeah. won't do that because if so, don't you just give up blocking angles, right? Because um, we had a t- we had one team that played us. We went tight end. They played us in a they were a four eye base, and they went four eye mug six, right? So when I say mug six, they put the they put the D in outside overhang, whatever you want to call them. They put him in a straight up. DB stance over top of the tight end in the six technique, right? But it, but you know, it's a it's a DN type body. Yeah. So now you, that's something you gotta you gotta deal with. Like, are we blocking that dude? Are we kicking him out? And I know why they did it because we're heavy power. So because we're heavy power counter, right? That means as soon as the tight end goes down, he's easy to mug lock on the tight end and then replace and sit and kind of cause that play and kind of cause counter to spill. So. That's something you gotta, you know, you gotta kind of practice and deal with. No, just have an answer for. Um, you know, the the four eye stuff. Here's what I would tell you with the four eye stuff. Remember, when you go nose four eye four eye, it's pretty tough to get a pass rush out of that. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say, hey, man. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Pretty much to get it. It's pretty tough to get a pass rush out of that. 
No, hundred percent. Um, and then and then kind of as as we start wrapping this up, Coach, um, when you're how do I want to word this? Um, the best what when you're building when you got there and started building your playbook, how what was that process like? So I'm always curious about that for like offensive coordinators. Obviously, we talked about how you adjust, but what was that initial process like in building your playbook? And what and out of curiosity, what do you use to teach it to your kids? Do you do you show them your playbook? Do you hand them out? Do you uh, put it all on a PowerPoint or slides on Huddle? How, how what was that process for you every year in installing? Interesting story here, buddy. Okay, so <laughs> I would I would equate this to uh, Nick Saban in Alabama. Okay, and what do I what do I mean by that? So. If you're kind of unfamiliar with how Nick Saban does things at Alabama, um, because they're losing coordinators every year, right? They're getting head jobs or doing whatever they're doing. Anytime that Coach Saban hires an offensive coordinator, he can come in, he can add things to the playbook, but he's got to he's got to use the playbook that the previous offensive coordinators used, and the language never changes. So the Alabama language is the Alabama language. Period. Okay, so when you come in, you, you got to learn it their way, and then you can add to it, but you got to learn what it is. So, with that being said, that's exactly how it was when I came to Wise. So the head coach was the old coordinator the previous, I think, three years. He had just won a state championship as the head coach, old coordinator. He brings me in. They were a heavy 32, 22, 21 personnel team you know heavy run um <clears throat> and i was coming from northwestern high school and we were a 20 personnel you know kind of like power um sprint out you know that that zone type deal so it took me about two years to fully grasp what he was doing the language now, I could call it, don't get me wrong, but, you know, the general thing. So, like, you know, there's just some things that when you're learning somebody else's offense or somebody else's terminology that are just based. So maybe if you're an 11 personnel and your tight end is your best player, you call trips right the way that the way it's set up. The tight end always goes to the trip side. So what's the word to get the tight end to the, end, to the, to the single side? Those are the little things that when it's not yours and you're learning from somebody else that you're kind of like, all right, well, now I need a word to get him backside. You know, where if when it's yours, you know, you just kind of come up with your terminology and you move forward. So <clears throat> we got into year one, two, year three. We totally sat down, revamped the offense. Um, that's when we went no huddle. And us putting it together, both two minds kind of working on it, that third year, we won 40, 44 games in a row after that. Um, so now the way it's done is our install is built like a house, okay? So the first day we're going to install ISO, period. Then anything that we do, that has the ISO blocking scheme is going in that day because we basically teach <clears throat> from the inside out. So we start with the O-line back. So anything that involves the ISO, um, the ISO blocking scheme, we're going to use that day. So that could be, you know, regular ISO. It could be dart. It could be uh, triple. It could be mid because essentially all of that stuff is the ISO blocking scheme. It's just who's not getting blocked or who's reading, right? Then let's say the next day will be power. So if power if it's power, then it's regular power, kicking the DN out. Then it's power read, leaving the DN unblocked. Then it's one back power, where we're going to lock on and wrap one. Like So essentially, we build it like a house, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's built towards the offensive line. So then let's say the next day was counter. It's GH counter, right, wrapping a tight end. Then it's GT counter wrapping the backside tight end. Then it's whatever the RPO is and whatever the triple is and whatever the play action pass is or the screen. So we basically build – my install goes in based on blocking schemes up front. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it does. Because you got to get five people working in unison is a whole lot harder than 
getting the individual skill players to run a hitch in a corner, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like I look at it as, hey, guys, we got seven on seven for y'all. We don't have anything for the linemen. So essentially <laughs> our installs always go around the linemen. Yeah. So I, I guess my short answer to you would be we install based on blocking schemes. And <clears throat> because of that, I, I kind of – I guess I was – I cater to the offensive linemen. So anything that we build – is built around our pass protection or our run protection or our run schemes, if that makes sense. That does, Coach. And I, I think that's a good place to end it there. Um, so, coaches, um, um, Coach Raps, contact information will be in the bio. His Twitter and all that stuff like normal. Please reach out to him. Give him a like. Give him a follow. Um, and then, like I said, Coach will get back to you. Um, like I said, they do, they do some really good things up there at Dr. Henry Wise High School. Um, and then also make sure you like this video, uh, subscribe, uh, it helps people find the stuff on the channel, helps us all this stuff keep going. Uh, coach, I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on and, and talking a little install and, uh, self-scouting. Yes, sir.